It's nice to put things together with the Pythagorean identity. Now let's first of all remember what the Pythagorean theorem is. Remember that that's if we have a right angle triangle, something like this, let's say, and we call this A, we call this B, we call this C, and this is right angle. We know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem, or this is the idea. Uh, keep in mind, my lines are really crooked, though they're supposed to be straight lines. Uh, so there we go, this is how it works. Now how can we use that for this stuff? Well, it turns out we actually can. What if we have some random uh, value? Let's say we just pick some random place along this circle. Let's say we pick something like this, some angle here. If we pick some angle here, then we've actually got some value here and some value over here. See that, that here we have, now if this is a unit circle, if we call this a unit circle, then we know this value right here is one. Now this one right here, what's the y value? If you remember, the y value is actually sine theta. Maybe I'll just actually erase that one because I want it to go over here. So this one right here, this right here, this is sine theta. Just want it to be more clear. And this one right here, the x value is cos theta. So we can do the same thing. This is still a 90 degree, uh, this is still a right angle triangle here. So if we did that, then we can also write this uh, identity here. We can say then that one squared equals, see I'm just doing c squared, equals a squared, which is gonna be cos theta, all that squared, plus sine theta, all that squared. Now one squared is just one. And I want to watch carefully, this one right here, this is correct what I've written, but the notation we tend to use, we tend to say cos squared theta. We actually put the squared first. It's just that you don't get confused and think that the theta is uh, squared. It's actually cos, so when we say cos squared theta, it really means take cos theta, uh-huh, and then square that answer. So just so you know, the notation actually looks like this. This is often how it looks in textbooks and formula booklets and things like that. So this is the Pythagorean identity. So it's basically, do the Pythagorean theorem, but instead of uh, your x and your y, call it cos and sine, and make this one because it's on a unit circle. If that's the case, that's what you get. Now why in the world do we use this? This comes in really handy if ever you're trying to convert from coses to sines, this is how you do it. At least you can get cos squared is gonna be you know one minus sine squared. And if you wanna get this by itself, then you can get this one minus sine squared. It's also really useful with working with other identities, if you're working with like uh, cotangents and secants and all these things like that. And you can also use it to solve questions without even needing theta or x, because you can also write it as an x here. But you can do that without even needing to find the angle. And so here's an example. Here I say without a calculator, calculate or find cosine theta if the sine theta is 2 over 3. Now I'm going to show you two methods of doing this. Okay, I'm going to show you method 1. And this is going to be with the Pythagorean identity. Now if you're careful with it, and you're careful with the math, you'll still get the right answer. And actually I'm going to add an extra page because I'm going to say here method 2. We're going to learn another one here. We're going to learn, well I'm going to show you a different method. That'll be by just drawing it. So draw it in the methods that I've been showing you before. So here we got method 1 and we got method 2. So let's do it with the Pythagorean identity. The identity says Remember, it says that 1 equals sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, or cos squared plus sine squared. It really doesn't matter what order you put them in. This is the identity, right? Cos squared plus sine squared, or sine squared plus cos squared. doesn't matter. Now, what we're trying to do then is to actually figure out what to do with this. Well, we know that sine theta is 2 thirds, and this is supposed to be sine theta squared. So the good news is you know that this this is sine theta, which is two-thirds. You know the answer to sine theta. Sine theta is this number two-thirds. And you're supposed to take sine theta and square it. So that means you take this value and you square it. So it's two-thirds squared plus cos squared theta. Uh, let's go a little step further then. So how do we do that? Well, we got to square all of this. So two squared is four, and three squared is nine. I'm going to show you every step of the way just to go nice and slow here. I want co I want theta by itself. Uh, sorry, I want cos theta on its own. So I'm almost there. See, I've got cos squared theta. I want just cos theta. So I've got to isolate for this. I'm going to jump this. I'm going to move this over to the other side. I'm going to throw it over. 
and this is a term with a plus in front of it, so it goes over by being a minus. So now 1 minus 4 over 9 equals cos squared theta. And you can also put this together, because I want to do a common denominator, so 1 can be seen as 9 over 9. And 9 over 9, I'll just show you that step then too, 9 over 9 minus 4 over 9 is just 5 over 9. So now I know that 5 over 9, that's what cos squared theta is. I'm almost there, because to get cos theta, what do I do? I take the square root, don't I? Square root of both sides. So square root of cos squared is just going to be give me cos. And taking the square root of this, there we go, I get the answer, right? And actually, i got to tell you, be very, very careful. Anytime you take the square root, it's technically, mathematically, it's supposed to be plus and minus. Be very careful here. This is important. This here is not trivial now. So we get plus or minus square root of 5 over 9. Now we can simplify slightly. We can say this is square root of square root of 5 over square root of 9. And because of that, then we can state with absolute certainty, finally then, that the answer is plus or minus square root of 5 over, and square root of 9 is just 3. So this is the fully reduced full answer. What this really means is that there are two answers possible. There's cos theta equals square root of 5 over 3, and there's also that cos theta is negative square root of 5 over 3. So this method, if you're careful with the math, that's why you shouldn't forget this. Right? Don't forget that piece. Then you get this answer. Let's see if we get the same thing from drawing it. So again, we know that sine of theta is 2 over 3. This is what we're told, that sine of theta is 2 over 3. So if we do it in this method, then when is sine, because this is what we're told, we're told that sine theta is 2 over 3, and we want cos theta. This is the only things we know. We want cos theta, and we're told that sine theta is 2 over 3. Well, here what you can do, you can start by quadrants. You can actually start looking at the quadrants and saying, well, what quadrants are we in? C-A-S-T here. Where are the places when sine is positive? Because we're told that sine is some positive number. So I hope you see that we can actually then figure out at least there's only two places where this is possible. It could be here, that's where all of them are positive, or it could be over here where just sine is positive. So it's either here or here. So there are two answers possible. Now what we can do then is try to work out, okay, well, where where is sine positive? Well, we got that. Now what we can do is draw the um, special triangle here. Or actually, not even a special triangle. We'll just try to draw what we're looking at. So let's just try to draw this first case here. Let's just try to draw the simplest one. This one right here, where it's sitting like this. Now, we don't exactly know where it is. We don't really know what theta is. It turns out we don't care. Because we know about sine theta, and we know about soka toa. So sine means opposite over hypotenuse. Maybe I'll label those. So this is opposite, this is hypotenuse, this is adjacent to this angle here. So if we have opposite hypotenuse and adjacent, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if this is the case, I know that this value has to be a 2. And this value over here has to be a 3. So this is what I know. I know that only because of drawing it and knowing about sine, cosine, and tangent. If this is 2 and this is 3 and this is a right angle triangle, could I find this piece right here? And yeah, I can actually. I can use Pythagorean theorem. So I can say 3 squared equals, I'll call it x squared plus 2 squared, let's just say. Well, 3 squared is 9. That equals x squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. So x squared is going to be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So I can say x squared equals 5. Therefore, I can say that x equals plus or minus square root of 5. I could say that. Now in this case, I'm only going to use the plus because it's here, so I'm going to say it's square root of 5. So I'm going to draw it then. Maybe I should move this little piece right here. I move that away, so I have room to say now that I know that this is actually root 5. Now that I've done this, it's actually really easy because what's cos? How do I do the cosine of an angle? Cos is... Uh, let's see here, let's write it down. So we know that cos of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So look at this angle. Of this angle, what's adjacent over hypotenuse? It's root 5 over 3. See that? And that's what the answer would be here. In this case right here, it would be this. But then you got to remember that there are two places where it was possible. It could have been here, but it could have also been here. What if I had drawn it over here? So, see, I've just drawn this. This is one answer. This is one of the answers. But that was only for this quadrant. Uh, that was only for this solution here in the A quadrant.
But let's do the other solution. There's another solution over here. There's another solution that's in the S quadrant, in this quadrant over here. And this one, luckily, we don't have to reinvent the wheel now. We can use all the values that we have. So we have this and this and this, and this right here is theta. And we know that this value right here is root 5, and we know that this value right here is 3, and we know this value here is 2. Because we've done all the work over here. It goes over, up, and then across, and you can do the same thing. But here you just got to be careful. If you go left, this value right here, from here, if you think about the x and y values, this value over here is negative. This one is positive because it goes up, and the radius is always positive. So here in this quadrant, cos theta is, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. And adjacent to this one is root 5, but it's negative, and the hypotenuse is 3. So in this case, here it's going to be negative root 5 over 3. So to see how we get two answers, we get positive root 5 over 3, and we get negative root 5 over 3. This is the sneaky one. A lot of students forget about the extra one. So do always watch out for your quadrants and think, is there more answer possible? So if we look at this then, we see, all right, we got root 5 over 3 and negative root 5 over 3. Or we could have done it the Pythagorean identity and be careful with the math, and you also got the same. So there are, there's lots of other ways of doing it, but these are at least two ways I wanted to show you.